Hey guys, Tommy here, and here to do our latest crypto market price forecast charts. Um, and I'm gonna take a little bit of a look at, also again, awareness of where we're at in the large scale economic cycle as well. But first and foremost, you know, uh, the reason why these charts are so important, you guys, is again, cryptocurrency goes through waves and you gotta ride these cycles. And I learned this, again, through experience of how important it is to pay attention to this. So uh, here we have the red line, which represents the fair value. And this is of the total market cap, by the way, and this is the market cap uh, in, uh, in trillions. So essentially the market cap currently of all cryptos is a little over a trillion with the trend having it at almost 2 trillion, growing at 61% per year. This is uh, very recent as of the 4th of July. Happy in Independence Day to those of you in the US and happy Inception Day to energy. Um, but yeah, 4th of July is a special day to me. Um, but yeah, here we see crypto is growing at roughly 61% per year. This orange dotted line represents where this red line was in that point in time. So we can see it's really uh, stabilizing over time. It's becoming a pretty good predictor of what to expect. So here we can clearly see the crypto market's undervalued, but we're gonna zoom into this because this is actually really interesting. We see some parts of the market are significantly more undervalued than others and others are starting to rise. If I were to give an analogy of where we're at right now, it feels like uh, dawn, you know, like you're, you're watching the sun, just you, the, 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 the light in the sky is just starting to come out. That's where we're at in this crypto market cycle, which is exciting. It's a very exciting time. Uh, it's been quite a brutal bear market, especially for people in NFTs and altcoins. And I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, first of all, or, or next, next, let me just show you this. Uh, this is our um, time deviation charts. This is my favorite uh, depiction of the chart, which basically shows how many months below value or under value we are based on the growth rate. And here we see, even for the total market cap, this is a pretty depressed state. Now, again, there's a positive factor in this. So when things are this undervalued in crypto, you guys, they could just pop off very quickly. So be aware of that. And again, there's some positive stuff there on the horizon. Um, I'm actually going to come back to altcoins. What I'm going to show you guys first is Bitcoin. And this is where we're seeing the kind of positive action. And this is this is similar to many cycles. You guys were where Bitcoin uh, a lot of times takes off first and then Ethereum and then altcoins and small caps. So kind of the biggest caps going to the small caps. We've seen this uh, a pattern in past years, and it doesn't surprise me that we're seeing something like this again. So check this out. Bitcoin's current price is around 31,000, but the fair value is around 40,000. So Bitcoin's still undervalued, but look at it. It's gaining, it's gaining closer to its current valuation. This is a growth rate of nearly 37% per year. And again, you can see the orange line is converging with the red line. So these forecasts and fair value estimations are pretty accurate. Um, check this out on the time deviation chart. We see Bitcoin is was it was quite undervalued here you guys this was this was crazy uh this was uh um around uh, christmas time here you know and around the ftx thing november last year november 2022 that uh bitcoin uh on a time scale was more undervalued than ever and since then bitcoin's had quite a run up it was around 16k here and now again around 30k so pretty much doubled in price so that's great to see that bitcoin's kind of come out and we feel that strength in the market um and then uh, let's move on to Ethereum. What we see with Ethereum uh, is Ethereum still hasn't felt that yet, but this is what I'm looking for next. I'm looking for a pop in Ethereum. Um, we don't know exactly how soon that comes, but Ethereum is ripe for popping off. <laughs> the price for Ethereum right now is, uh, uh, is about 1900, 1900 bucks. Fair values, 6,400, you guys. That's crazy. That, can you guys imagine Ethereum at 6,400 right now? That would be all time highs. You know, that would be crazy, but uh, that's our fair value. This is growing at 76% per year. You can see this line on Ethereum still hasn't fully stabilized, but it's starting to converge around this. Basically what this means is um, back in the last bull market, um, this model was uh, uh, kind of overestimating how, how high Ethereum should be. And it's kind of um, made those adjustments. So it's more modest. So in reality, Ethereum was more undervalued uh, more overvalued than uh, than this model predicted. But again, you can see over time, uh, I like these logarithmic regression models. Over time, they really do uh, become a pretty strong um, predictor. But you can you can also see um, 
you can also clearly see the waves we go through, right? To get a sense of it. So, um, yeah, so again, Ethereum growing at 76% per year uh, based off the latest data, again, uh, 4th of July. So check this out on the Ethereum uh, time deviation chart. So this is interesting. So again, we had that big crash around the FTX debacle, but check out what's been going on with the price of Ethereum. It's been trending up. You can see that it's, 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 it's as if the red line is like pulling, it's a gravity, you know, it's pulling it up to the line. So this is really good to see. So again, Bitcoin's done really well, right? Bitcoin has come out quite strong. Ethereum is looking decently strong, right? As we see, but still has a lot of uh, room to run. Um, but this brings us to altcoins. Um, let me actually go to the first altcoin chart here. Um, here, altcoins, the market cap is 477 billion with a trend at 1.8 billion. So this is crazy. This means altcoins are currently less than a fourth of their trend. That's, that's crazy and growing at 93.8% per year. So altcoins have the fastest growth in the crypto space. Um, uh, but of course the biggest risk and biggest downside as well too. And check out this graph here. Um, the orange line has converged with the red line pretty well here. Uh, but, but look at where altcoins are at in this, you guys. Under the, under the green dotted line here, um, this is uh, the most severe undervaluation we've had in altcoins. I don't know if I'd count uh, this area here as it was really early on in there and it wasn't, it, uh, we didn't have enough data to really work with. Check this out on the time deviation as well too. Look at this. This is the reason why you guys, the past uh, bit over a year has been brutal in the crypto market. Check this out. Here, uh, all coins were, you know, around fair value. This was uh, around May of last, of, of 2022, before things just fell off the cliff. If you guys remember that, especially in NFTs, as much as cryptos fell off here, NFTs fell off even more. This was brutal. This May, June period of last year was brutal. But but look at this. At this time, you know, altcoins were around fair value. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't like 2017 where things were nuts, um, you know, and things kind of, kind of like tamed down, you know, after the surge uh, in 2021. Um, but then things just fell off a cliff. And basically from then till now, the past, you know, over, uh, let's just say roughly year and a half, has been a pretty rough time in uh, in altcoins. And, and look at this, uh, we're 24 months. This means um, we are, uh, it would take, it, we're, we're 24 months worth of growth below the fair value. And this is uh, this is a record low on this chart. So uh, here, and the, the look, look at this one during that COVID crash of March of 2020, even that depth of that crash didn't put us as low as we are now. So what I'm telling you guys is all coins are severely undervalued right now, severely. Now this sort of stuff doesn't last forever and they can come back very strongly, very fast. We see that in 2017, things just took off. I mean, I'm talking a matter of months. Things from when things went from being depressed and everything here. I remember this in 2017, I did an interview with a guy here. Ethereum was seven bucks. He was calling the death of Ethereum and all that. 2017 came around, stuff took off, man. And then late 2017, another leg. It was crazy. 2017 was crazy. You know, for those of you guys there for that, that was a crazy time. And here, then we had the bear market going into, you know, going into 2022, things were a bit rough. And then things, things took off and we had a good, a good time, you know, for a lot of 2020 and a lot of 2021, things were good. And then toward the end of 2021, things rolled over and basically, for 2020, 2022 and 2023, near, you know, a year and a half, a little more than that, things have been pretty rough. But again, look at where this puts us in this extreme undervaluation area. Um, and again, that, pos that positions things to take off. So I wanted this update for you guys to see that. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of economic stuff in just a second. But again, just to recap here, um, keep in mind that uh, what I'm expecting to see would be Ethereum to have a pop off here. Ethereum is ripe for pop off. Bitcoin has popped off, it's doing well. Uh, next up would be Ethereum in line for that. And that's, that's really cool to think about because Ethereum is currently around 2000, which isn't bad. But if you guys can imagine uh, ETH going back to three or 4,000, the space is gonna be excited. That's not a huge gain on this. The fair value is 6,400, meaning ETH would still be undervalued at a significantly undervalued at a three, three to four thousand price point, but that would bring a lot of optimism and confidence back to the back to the market, and then ultimately that will flow into altcoins. Now that all being said, 
I want to remind you guys there's other uh, macro headwinds to be aware of. Um, this is something I watch closely. Uh, the 10 year minus the three month treasury. This is a predictor of recessions, uh, quite a good predictor of them. And you can see here we're in significantly inverted territory. Uh, you know, look, when you get that inverted, uh, it, it, uh, usually a recession follows. And we know the economy is not in a great situation, even though they're saying unemployment isn't that low and stuff. The friends I know and stuff who are in the market looking for a job, it's a pretty brutal job market right now for a lot of people. So here you see the same thing. The 10-year minus the two-year paints a similar picture, actually. You see we haven't had an inversion like this since 1980. And back here, the interest rates were high, 15 20%. So this much of an inversion wasn't that big of a deal. Right here, our interest rates are, are not that high. We're not in 15 to 20%. We're around 5%. So this inversion is massive, you guys. We're in a massive inverted state. Um, I think there's very likely a recession on the horizon. The way this yield curve has to correct means the short-term rates, like the Fed fund rates, has to drop back to near zero, or the long-term rates, like the 30-year bonds, have to go up, and if the rates have to go up, and that would just crush um, so many things. So I think the, the way out of this is, sadly, a recession, which, you know, I've been... I have, I have a pretty big foresight. I've seen this coming for years, um, but um, yeah, anyway, it seems like it's getting close, but um, at least the Fed can, uh, with interest rates at you know 5%, the Fed has room to drop those to correct us out of a recession and that sort of incident. Um, just another thing I wanna show you here. Um, this is uh, Charlie Bolello. He's awesome. You guys should follow him on Twitter if you haven't. But he says here, the last three times the ISM manufacturing was this slow, the U.S. economy was about to be in a recession. Uh, you have to go back to 95 to 96 to find a lower reading with no recession. So just another kind of, there's a lot of data points that show we have a recession uh, you know, on the horizon. We don't know exactly when that is. We know the economy is in pain, but it could last for months more. It could last for, who knows, maybe another year or two. It's really hard to say. But, you know, some people are predicting it this year. Or whatnot but anyway that being said still you know crypto is the the honey badger you know and um i think crypto um regardless of what happens in um if there is a market crash or whatnot obviously that'll affect crypto but i think crypto is so well positioned you guys know the having is coming up um we got the having coming up in uh I, I believe june of next year and usually six months before the having uh, which would put us in December of this year, things really start picking up. So um, with the cycle of uh, the crypto markets, the things are positioning pretty well, despite what's going on in the global economy. So keep that in mind too. It's gonna be interesting to see how those kind of interact. But anyway, uh, don't wanna make this video too long. Just wanna share this with you guys. Be sure to hit the like button if you haven't, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, yeah, as always love to hear your feedback. So uh, yeah, wish you guys well, take care and catch you guys in the next one.